In June of 2016, Star Trek actor Anton Yelchin was tragically killed when his Jeep pinned him to a mailbox. This particular car in question has a really stupid gear shift design that makes it difficult to determine what gear the vehicle is actually in, and this has been attributed to his death. It's widely believed that Anton unknowingly shifted the vehicle into reverse or neutral as he exited rather than park, allowing it to roll backwards and pin him down. What I find even more tragic than the stupid gear shift is the fact that, with what is likely a simple software change to the car's engine computer, this could have been rendered impossible. How? By making the seat a dead man's switch. A dead man's switch is a device that prohibits the operation of a machine unless the operator is present. These are not uncommon fail-safes, in fact you likely encounter them in everyday life. At home, if you have a powered lawnmower, then you've used one yourself. The lawnmower can only be operated if this lever is being held down against the handlebar. As soon as the operator lets go, the lawnmower shuts off. Snow throwers have the same arrangement. Outside the domestic environment, locomotives typically have a dead man switch, which must be held down by a train operator. Should an operator become incapacitated or leave his post, the switch will be released and the brakes applied automatically, bringing the train safely to a stop. Dead man switches are also applied on other industrial vehicles, amusement rides, etc. A dead man switch is no more than a sensor that detects the presence of something. Software or mechanical hardware uses the sensor's input to determine whether or not to allow for the operation of the machine or device. While they're common on many potentially dangerous machines, they're strangely absent from cars. Except they're not. Practically all cars produced in the last 5 or 10 years have advanced airbags that can be deployed at different intensities or in fact disabled based upon the type of body sitting in the seat. The airbag control module uses what's called an occupant classification system to determine if and how the airbags should be deployed in a collision. The occupant classification system is comprised of pressure sensors in the seats that can determine the weight of the seat's occupant. Heavier individuals will likely cause the system to deploy the airbags at full strength, while lighter individuals will trigger a reduced intensity deployment. Very light people, such as children, will prevent the airbag from deploying as it could in fact be more harmful than helpful. Also the system will outright disable the airbags if no one is sitting in the seat. Why do I bring this up? Well, because the car has sensors that can determine if no one is in the driver's seat, and with just some simple programming, the car could be prevented from moving if the seat is unoccupied. Let me explain. Many people don't realize it, but the controls in your car are becoming less and less real. For instance, the accelerator pedal no longer pulls a cable which physically opens the throttle. Now it's just a sensor that sends its position to the computer, which then opens the throttle electronically based on that sensory input, a technology commonly called drive-by-wire. Many gear shifts no longer have a connection to the transmission. They simply tell the computer what gear is selected, and the computer does the rest. There are even cars now that don't have a direct connection from the steering wheel to the steering rack, so-called steer-by-wire. It would not be difficult to arrange a shift interlock based on the occupant detection sensors in the seat. All cars already have a shift interlock that prevents the driver from shifting out of park unless the brake is applied. But just a little software could add a new one. An interlock that can force the transmission into park if no one is sitting in the seat. Now let me start by saying that this may not be possible as cars currently are designed. Most cars only have pressure sensors in the passenger seat. While the driver's airbag is usually dual intensity, the OCS uses the seat's position and whether or not the seatbelt is buckled to make its determination on how to deploy the airbag. However, you could use the seatbelt buckle status as a shift interlock, putting the car in park if the driver unbuckles. But I could see this presenting problems both from public resistance, there are after all some people who still refuse to wear seatbelts, and there could be practical barriers as well. In any case, it's very likely that there is no interface between the occupant detection system and the engine computer, since the airbag module is typically operationally separate. However, assuming such an interface does or could be made to exist, then for cars with the correct sensors, it's simply a matter of software. For models where pressure sensors aren't currently in the driver's seat, since passenger seats are already just a symmetrical copy of the drivers, I don't see adding the pressure sensors as a large barrier. All that's needed to prevent the scenario that led to Anton's death is just a little bit of code that checks the sensors in the seat to determine if someone's sitting in it. If the sensor sends back an empty seat signal, then the vehicle is prevented from shifting out of park, but more importantly, the system could be designed to automatically shift into park if the seat becomes empty while in another gear.
If this system were in place, then even though Anton unknowingly left the vehicle with the transmission out of park, the car could have detected he exited and automatically shifted to park. Cars with a manual transmission could use the same system to apply an electronic parking brake, a feature becoming more common every day. These days it's downright lazy to ignore potential safety upgrades like this. Remember the whole debacle with the supposed runaway Priuses, Pri, whatever? That made accelerator overrides mandatory, where the computer would disable the throttle if it detected the brake was also being applied. It was an easy thing to design, since the computer already controlled the throttle, and it already accepts input from the brake pedal. That's how the computer knows you've stepped on it to disable cruise control. These quick changes in programming have the potential to save lives, and we already know of one that would have been saved. As the computer becomes more and more integrated into the operation of a vehicle, there are more and more things that can be done to make the car safer. Of course, there are those people who would complain about this and might offer wild scenarios of what would happen with the system failure, and to them, I'd like to offer the following reply. If you're worried about this sort of thing, you should really look into how modern engines are controlled. Virtually nothing is purely mechanical anymore. Spark timing, valve timing and lift, throttle, fuel injection, exhaust emissions, even the thermostat are now controlled by the engine computer, at least partially. Without a functioning ECM, literally nothing would work. It would also not be difficult to engineer an override to this safety feature should a system failure occur, such as a failed sensor. A procedure as simple as pressing the engine start stop button five times in a row could be used to tell the computer to ignore whatever the sensor is reporting. Software is very flexible. Likewise, should the system detect an empty seat at high speed, well there's no reason to worry about it shifting to park for someone shifting in their seat. The computer could simply take no action when moving faster than 5 or perhaps 10 miles an hour. If an outright sensor failure occurs at high speed, it would simply set a trouble code. This would then turn on the check engine light or perhaps the airbag light, warning the driver of the problem. And I'll tell you a secret. That's exactly how your car works now with other system failures, and it has worked that way since 1996. So now what? Well, here's where we have two options. Either no one at any automaker has ever thought of this, which I suppose isn't impossible, and we'll start to see software like this installed on cars of the future, or perhaps sent via an over-the-air update, Tesla. Or there's some desire to prevent such a system from being implemented. Perhaps our friends at the regulatory level would like to say something about this, or maybe I'm crazy and there's absolutely no need to do this as we couldn't possibly justify the cost. Which is virtually nothing. Again, software, computers, flexibility. Before I sign off, let's go back to lawnmowers for just a moment. Riding lawnmowers have a dead man switch too, just like your push mower. Where is it? Well, it's in the seat. If the rider gets up, the mower shuts down. So it's not like this is a foreign concept. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe to Technology Connections. I'm doing my best to keep videos like this coming your way. I'll see you next time.